human consciousness is that faculty that confronts potential itself. I think there's good neurological evidence for this, by the way, for those of you who are scientifically minded, because uh, we build circuits within us for habitual action that we've practiced many times that seem to run in a very deterministic fashion. And we are a strange combination of deterministic and non-deterministic, as far as I can tell. But what our consciousness seems to be for is to encounter those things that we have not yet encountered. And those things that we have not yet encountered seem to me to be those things that have not yet been brought into being. And so you could say that what our consciousness is for is for the encounter with potential. You know, that our consciousness is for the... It's not for the past. It's not even for the present. It's to transform the future into the present. And, and really that that's what our consciousness does. And when you wake up in the morning, you have a new day ahead of you. And the day could take you in very many directions. And, and the weeks and the years, all of that can take you in very many directions. And you have some apprehension about what those directions might be. You have some apprehension about what role your choices might make in transforming that potential into one form of actuality or another. I mean, you certainly know that there are dreadful mistakes that you might be very tempted to make that would produce all manner of hell around you and still be tempted to do it. It seems like it's sitting there right in front of you as a possibility. You also know that, you know, you could haul yourself up out of bed and attend to your duties and do the sorts of things that you're supposed to and set a few things right that day and that week and that likely things would at least not be worse and they would probably be better. And uh, I, I believe that, I do believe that, I don't understand how this can be the case. I don't understand how it is that consciousness, consciousness can function in that way because I think to understand that, we would have to understand what it means for the future to be only potential rather than actuality, and who the hell understands that? I mean, no one. And then we'd have to understand how it is that our conscious choices and our conscious ethical choices transform that potentiality into actuality, into reality, into the present and the past. And we certainly... Well, we certainly act as if we believe that that's what we do. We upbraid ourselves. For example, when we do a bad job of it, we're upset with our children and those we love if we don't believe that they're living up to their potential. We're guilty and ashamed when we make choices that we feel are inappropriate. We understand to some degree that the manner in which time lays itself out has something to do with the ethics of our choice. And again, I would say that's a very deep idea. I think it's a, I think it's, I think it's the most true idea I know. It's very emphasized that idea emphasized in ancient religious stories, such as those that are outlined in Genesis or in Genesis with its strange insistence that, you know, God is that which brings order out of chaos, formless potential, generates the world out of formless potential, and that we're somehow made in that image. Which, which seems to me to be the case. And that the proper way, by the way, to go about acting in that image is to act in relationship to the potential that confronts you with truth and with courage, with careful articulation. That's the logos. And that if you do that, then what you bring forth is, is good.